Greetings! This is Unit 6, Module 1, Session 1. The name of this home connection is Area and Perimeter Story Problems. Two pages, name and number. Let's do this thing. Uh, it says you can make sketches to help solve the problems below. Remember to include the units of measurement in your answer. So if it talks about square feet, right, or feet, make sure you include the correct units, okay? And I love to draw, so hopefully it won't surprise you that I will be sketching these out. The classroom rug is nine feet long and has an area of 72 square feet. We need to know the width of the rug. Okay, so here's my rug. Ooh, come on, pen. It's had a long weekend. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Why not? That's my rug. Uh, it's nine feet long, so we got nine feet here. Okay, uh, the area is 72 square feet. Area is length times width, right? So we said it's nine feet long, so we know that nine times the width is what? Nine times the width, which we don't know, is 72 square feet. So we know the answer to the problem because they said that. It gave us one dimension, the length, nine feet long, and it gave us the area, which is length times width. What we're missing is the width. So nine times this number is 72, okay? You could flip it around and say 72 uh, divided by 9 equals the width. You could do it that way. You could flip it around. However you want to do this is perfectly fine. You could count by 9s. You could say uh, 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 27. 36. 45. 54. 63. 72. Right? You could just do your math facts to figure out what it is, but 9 times what is 72? 9 times 1, 9 times 2, times 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 times 8 is 72. So our missing dimension is 8. Okay? What is the perimeter of the rug? Well, first we have to kind of maybe answer this question. What is the width of the rug? We just said 8 what? 8 feet. Make sure you label it. The perimeter of the rug, which I'm going to allow you to do, would be adding up all of the sides. And I'm going to let you do that. Make sure your answer is in feet, please. Pause this video and figure out the perimeter, please. Chrissy is going to make a big painting on a piece of wood that is four feet wide and has an area of 28 square feet. So here's my piece of wood. Isn't it so funny? It kind of looks a lot like my rug. Uh, and it said that it's four feet wide. Okay. There's my rectangular piece of wood. It's four feet wide. It has an area of 28 square feet. What is area? Area is length times width, which is what we just talked about. It gave us the width, and it gave us the area. So 28 is length times 4, right? If I wanted to flip this around, I could say 28 divided by 4 equals the length. If I broke 28 into four equal pieces, what would it be? You could count by fours. Four, you could say four times what is 28. You could say four, eight, 12, 16, 20, uh, 24, 28. And then when you get to the answer, that should be the number of groups you need because we're counting by fours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 28 divided by four is seven. The length is seven. Seven what? Seven feet. Make sure you label it that way. And once again, I am going to let you find that perimeter on your own, okay? Perimeter is adding up all of the sides, distance around, okay? The play school's playground measures 465 feet by 285 feet, and it wants to know the perimeter of the playground. So I have 465 feet, that would be its length, our width would be 285 feet, okay? Perimeter is distance around. If you know the length and the width, you know the other two sides as well, don't you? The opposite sides are going to be the same, 465, and the opposite sides are going to be the same, 285. To find the perimeter, you are going to add all four numbers together, please make sure that you answer in feet. Remember that when you do area, 
that's going to be square units. But when we're talking perimeter, you're just going to use the standard unit. We're not doing area in this problem. Okay? Pause that video. Okay? Take your time. Shanice and Micah are using yellow craft paper to cover a bulletin board. The board is 11 feet wide and 7 feet tall. Oh, look. They drew it there. The craft paper comes in a roll that is one yard wide. They can roll it out and cut it to any length, but the paper will always be one yard wide. Draw and label on the bulletin board pictures below to show two different ways Shanice and Micah can cover the bulletin board. So I want you to picture this roll of paper. The tube itself is one yard. Okay, what is one yard? One yard is three feet, okay? That should help us visualize this a little bit. So two different ways that Shanice and Micah can cover the bulletin board. So let's say that we did, we made maybe made the paper go across this way. We roll it across in that direction, okay? Well, I can do three feet, okay? But then I may have to roll more paper and do three more feet. How many am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to seven, aren't I? So I'm still gonna need another roll of paper because even if I do two stacks and I roll them out, I can only get six feet high. I still have this one foot left over. So I'm still gonna need to roll out another sheet or another length of paper off of that tube, okay? An alternative way that I could go is I could maybe go like three feet this way and roll up so then this would be my three feet wide, right? And then I would roll the paper again and cover up, you know, this much of it. And that would be another three feet. And then I would roll it up again. I need, oh, that was a really terribly non-straight line. There would be another three feet. So three, six, nine. What am I trying to get to? Eleven. I'd still have two feet left over. I'd still have to roll out another length of paper. I would just have to trim the edge off. Okay? So kind of like if I was rolling the paper like this, like I roll the paper up and then I get another roll of paper and then I get another roll of paper and then I have one more. It's, it's too much. It, it, cover, it, go, it, it goes too far past the edge, but I still need a fourth roll to cover the whole bulletin board, right? So those would be the two different ways that I would cover it. You could be creative and maybe do diagonals, but if we're working with square paper, right, I've got right angles in my paper, it's maybe nice to just go side to side or up and down, okay? Which of the two ways above wastes less paper? Oh man. Well, I can use one full strip here, one full strip here, and then I have a one foot strip at the top, which means I'm going to kind of waste two feet, right? Because it's a three foot piece of paper. So I'm gonna cut one foot off for the board, but then I have two feet left over that I don't need. Uh, if I go this way, I'll use a full sheet, full sheet, full sheet, and then at the end, I need two feet. So that means the wasted paper that I'm gonna have to trim off the edge is one foot, okay? So if it were up to me and we're trying to choose the way that uses the wastes less paper, here I've gotta cut t a huge two foot section off that's 11 feet wide, or 11 feet long and two feet wide. Um, here I'm gonna cut off a, um, a seven foot piece that's only one foot wide. And w when you answer that down here, you could absolutely draw it that maybe that first way you're gonna waste a two foot by 11 foot piece of paper. And then the second way you're gonna waste a one foot by seven foot piece of paper. And this is only one uh, square foot or seven square feet of paper that's wasted. But here there's 22 square feet of paper wasted. So I'm going to let you answer that however you want. I kind of tend to like to answer it in pictures. But of course, you know, um, you could answer it in sentences as well, and that would be fine. If you have questions, make sure you ask a math wizard. Teachers, of course, love to ask questions or love to answer questions. Uh, but maybe there's somebody else you know, too. Just make sure you ask somebody if you are uncomfortable with any of these topics. Alrighty? Take it easy.